Welcome to the Electric Mosque's presentation of the teachings of Islam. And I'm your friend, your brother, Haji Dr. Ocean Khan. I wish to touch for two minutes on the concept of the Electric Mosque. It took well over 30 years of me commencing this wisdom from Allah of using the medium of electricity for the cause of Islamic propagation, peace, goodwill amongst humanity, amongst Muslims. Of course, the Muslims, who are supposed to be the most scientific people on the earth, at least in the time past, and who have lost it all, this prowess and wisdom for sciences, due to ego, due to sectarianism, in some cases due to warfare, and so on. The fact remains that Muslims today are not very scientific. And we depend upon the non-Muslims for virtually everything. When at one time, Arabia and the religion of Islam was the source of all knowledge and wisdom, especially for the whole of Europe. And we used to go to Arabia the way people go to New York. Or to Germany and Europe and so on. And I just want to share that with you, that when I commenced this Electric Mosque Teachings of Islam, people thought I was selling TV. Intellectual Muslims, you know, in Guyana, the foreign ones were wondering what this guy was trying to say. In Guyana, they were making mockery of the Electric Mosque Teachings of Islam. And then it went on for years, and they say, I'm propagating, and see, I'm doing sermons and kutwa, I'm having guests and interviews. And slowly they were beginning to understand the power of the medium of electricity in propagation as Islam as a religion of peace and wisdom. And then the big knowledge came to them in Guyana and Guyanese in North America during the COVID-19 when they had to do sermons, lead prayers, etc. through the internet, the medium of electricity. Your brother, me, Hachi, Dr. Ocean Khan, I was ahead of it over 30 years. And I was explaining this to them. So even then, they were always negators. Some of them came about and they were saying, well, how can you lead a solar through this medium using the camera and video? Because you're different places. And this goes to show the intellect or lack of intellect, sorry to say brothers and sisters, of, of the leaders. Always to the point of the nose and to the level of the nose, not beyond the great horizon. In the, you are able to climb the high mountain and to see the far horizon and to see the, and understand greatness. It is very simple. A sermon can be done here. The Imam can do his leading in the, in the prayers. And wherever, in any part of the world, or the country, you face the Kaaba Sharif. Put the television in front of you. The smart TV, of course, 
or the computer or the laptop, and let the Imam do his leading, wherever you may be. Unfortunately, there is a debate on this amongst the intellectuals. The ulema, some of them, and of course some of the great ones, outstanding ones, like those who now understand sectarianism, when we have begun Islamic Forum, Muhammad, Imam Muhammad Rashid and I started this non-sectarian drive, we were again mocked and teased and attacked. And then Al-Hazar heard of it, they did a study and they found that what you were saying is true, but they do not give you your credit. And everywhere you go now, you're hearing about sectarianism and we must be non-sectarianism, but the Muslims in Guyana and around the world were oblivious to that. As they're reading the Quran, they're seeing it only in one way. For example, in the quote where it says that your affair is what not with them, it is with Allah. They think you've got to boycott them, the level of intelligence. If there, there were beauty in their heart and love, they will understand what Allah is saying if they have deviated and are involved in groups and sects. Then, you leave them. It is not your affair. Let them pray. You don't have to boycott them. You don't have no right to call anyone a kafir. Because remember the Quran says, you call someone a kafir, the kufur returns to you. And so these are the two areas where your yours truly have been leading in the cause of Islamic propagation using the medium of electricity and inspiring others to use it and never claiming it as, an, as my domain. Who can claim electricity or the internet as your domain? And this is why I came up with this electric mosque presentation of the teachings of Islam, striving to bring Islam into your homes and into the corners of Allah's earth. And into your heart, remember, hearts rest best with Allah, it start to catch on. When we started on channel 6, first of all, channel 11, then we went on channel 6, then a famous Islamic institution went against us and started to go on the same time that we were on channel 6. Instead of embracing us and recognizing the positives, they were trying to make war. Islam is the religion of peace, respect, love and harmony, my beloved divine friends, family, brothers and sisters. I have actually withdrawn my support of one major Islamic organization in Guyana, not the CIOG, not the Central Islamic Organization of Guyana. They have been coming up and they've been accepting the power of, of telecommunication and now they even want their own television towers. So brothers and sisters, friends and family, some of us are always ahead of our time. Now, I must let you know that I am I am suffering from COVID. I'm in New York City. I came for other medical issues and then confronted with that. So I am in home isolation, but I'm not wasting my time. And so I wish to use this opportunity, brothers and sisters, to advise you that for this week and the next a few weeks, I plan to go into certain short chapters of the Holy and the Glorious Quran and to read them and read the editor's explanation or the translator's exp explanation and then to dilate. It will not be a sermon or a kutpa, but it will be a kind of education, teaching as I see, and then inspiring others to do the base, basically the same kinds of things. Because all the sheikhs and the maulanas are doing is they are recording their kutbas and so on and they are sharing it out. And here and there make a comment on this event and that event. So I'm going to start this off by trying to give a kind of a lecture hoping to inspire the giants of Islam. Now I received something through the internet from Haji Sheikh Zamir and I have Zamir of Mecca, or Zamir Mecca, because he's always marketing his, his Mecca trips. 
whether it is for Hajj or whether it's for the Mimini Hajj, the Umrah. And so I want to read this and to try to share it with you, my beloved divine. Some of the words. So for you to get the message I'm trying to get, you must understand the word Murtadin. Murtadin means an apostate, a person who was a Muslim and abandoned the religion, which is democratically approved. But you cannot abandon it and become a destroyer of the religion. Then you become a Murtadin, an apostate, who is an enemy and a working to destroy our prophet in his days. He had to go after one person who was exposing their plans for defense and their programs in order to destroy them. So agents have to, had to go after him. But for changing your religion, that is your human democratic right. My understanding and readings also led me to understand if a person does that once, comes back, you give them a break, but and they leave again, then there is no third. You can't come back again. You are out of the pale of Islam and you cannot come back. That is my understanding. I stand for correction. But my little readings, and I'm no scholar. I'm self-taught. A lot of wisdom come from Allah. And I do not follow a particular school of thought because they like to control you and make you their puppet. I was telling you about the one organization, the big one in Guyana, before I go on. I had to boycott it. Because they, they said, when I sent some books from the Guyana Islamic Forum on sectarianism and so on, that they know that I normally contribute a lot of money. But they welcome my money, but they don't want my books or my writings. How rude and pompous for people who are supposed to be the highest of God's creation, the Muslim people. That even taking the time to study and critique it and invite me for a discussion because they know they can't win me. None of the scholars, the highest of scholars, can win me in a discussion because I don't only deal with Sharia but I deal with what is called rationality the judgment, the criteria the capacity to think and discriminate by God's power, Allah's power so they, many times I have invited to debate but they wouldn't come but we have come out of all of that now our aim is to find common ground to bring love and goodwill and peace to the Muslims and also to work with peoples of other faiths. When I started this thing about 30 years ago of working with the non-Muslims, I was actually mocked again and recognizing the non-Muslims as equal partners of, in matters of faith and law and jurisprudence and goodwill, I was attacked and criticized again. That is some of the things that make me depressed about Muslim leadership and scholarship. Now, some of the big boys, they have woken up, they have come around, and they always try to use the governing leadership and so on to get recognition. But some of us, that's our job, is to awake them. And once we awake them, and they can take the message further, we are pleased. So friends and families, 13 minutes so far. I received this from Brother Zamir. And this is what the message is saying. People nowadays fear loneliness over evil friendship. But as I was telling you, um, a Murtadin is an apostate. You need to know what is a Mujirat. Confusion of loneliness. You can see the two together. And what I just read. People fear over loneliness. People nowadays fear loneliness over evil friendship. That's Mujirat. Nafs. You may have heard of Imam speak of Nafs. But many really don't, ordinary people don't understand, get into the what is this Nafs. So Imam, you almost explain a little bit. Keep on talking about nafs. People don't know Arabic. Leaders and scholars and sheikhs. So you see what is nafs. 
That refers to you yourself. Your choices for evil preponderances. It refers to your self, you, the within, not the ordinary self, but the self within this self. It refers also to the psyche that gives you the choices of the self, which might have to do, and it goes to say also it means ego, ego rush, egocentricity, which might be animalistic, the lowest of the low, that leads you to the nafs of the lowest, the self of the lowest, like a snake that crawls, or the pig, or the id. And then you have the nafs that take you to the higher level, that, that you climb the greater ladder, the highest mountain, the nafs. That gives you the third eye to see beyond the norm, to give you warnings of evil, to give you guidance and peace, and to make cause you to make good decisions. And then I want you to understand what is a ruh, the ruh, the ruh. We heard imams talking about it, and we always say it has to do with the spirit. Okay, the ruh, Allah blew His breath. So the rule really refers to the breath. Not this ordinary breath. It means the breath of life. When Sivanehu and Allah blew into man, that this existing being that was already being developed by evolution, and he blew into man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. In the Hebrew language, that is referred to as nepish. The breathing, living soul, the thinker. And man became a living soul. It doesn't mean it was a piece of mud he blew into. It means he blew into the being that was being evolved by the process that Allah created from the waters. Man didn't walk out of the waters. All life come from the waters. Quran says. Anybody disagree? Anybody disagree? Well, tell me, meet me. Call me for guidance, teach me. All life comes from water. And from that developed and evolved. And man evolved. This two-legged creature. And went through a period of history of growth and development. And then at the right time, when Subhanahu wa ta'ala knew, he intervened and blew into man the breath of life, the ruh, that soul. And so, that you may understand the point that I'm trained to make my divine brothers and sisters. So I go to read now. People nowadays fear loneliness over evil friendship. It doesn't matter whether they are friends with Murtadim, Mujirat, I give you the meanings, or people who commit shirk, they put partners with Allah, shirk, openly as long as they do not end up lonely. So, the writer of this piece that Brother Zamir is sharing has to do with people fear loneliness. And because of this fear for loneliness, so to understand if you are lonely, to turn around and come and do zikir and worship Allah and read and study, they are, according to this notation, they are going to form relationship with apostates, mutadin, mujirat, to avoid confusion of loneliness, and go to the lower nafs to try to and actually associate partners with Allah and become a dog as long as they don't end up lonely. There are three things the instigator human do to evil things. I repeat, there are three 
things the instigator do to human to do evil things. Now, it's easy to say shaitan and blame shaitan of forgetting that you, the Muslim, has been given the power and authority over shaitan. Shaitan cannot touch you or enter into you or come near you except unless you invite him in. By shirk, by mujirat, of being afraid of loneliness and allowing nonsense and associating shirk with Allah and murtadin associating with the apostates, the enemies of Allah. Not those who have left Islam, but those who are the enemies that want to destroy Islam. Men like what they call, I heard, something called Christian Prince. Always attacking Islam, putting people to call who are his people and then debating with them to make Islam look bad. That's an apostate. And people will befriend them because they don't want to be lonely. The three things. The devil, he tempts you. He cannot enter you, but he can tempt you. He got that authority from Shemanehu wa Ta'ala, the Lord of the world. So that's one. They say three things. Number two, the nafs. Your nafs. Your psyche. Your ego. Your choices. Our choices. My choices. The nafs tempts you. You have desire within you that you want. And the nafs is the one that tempts you to do that. So this desire of the ego and the psyche and invitation of shaitan who is over there is all a temptation to you. You don't restrict your nafs is the same way as the devil. So the message is if you don't control that nafs, that ego, that psyche, that ability to invite shaitan in, it's the same way as the devil. Taking control. Number three. Human beings who instigate you to do evil and all of them are worse of each other. All of them are very bad. Probably the third one is the worst because the other ones you could say Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ashahadu an la ilaha illa Allahu wa shahadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Be gone! You evil nafs. You shaitan. You evil preponderances. And you could, you could, the third one which is most desperate and dangerous that instigate you. And you could call upon Allah. In the name of his beloved prophet and get them away. But once you have evil friends, that's why the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always, always stress that you watch who you befriend. Oh yes. Oh yes. Like I continue to read, you know, and I'm making some commentary. Our prophet warned us the technique is to believe in Allah. And our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stress that you watch who you befriend. Be friends, but do not be bad fellows. Be respectful, but don't allow them to lure you to wrong. Nothing wrong with being friends of people of other religions. Once they cannot invite you to evil. Always stress that you watch who you befriend unless you give him dawah. Instead of him giving you their dawah or evil thoughts to do evil things. And you can give them dawah because if you don't have an effect on them, they will have an effect on you. Beloved divine friends and family. 
for those who tries to influence you through the nafs, through the fear of loneliness and the confusion that goes with low loneliness, you could end up in the hands of the devil and be like the snake crawling with the lowest of the low in the lowest of the nafs. And you can use that same ego and that same self and psyche to raise to the highest of the high, where you become a discriminator of wisdom and creativity of leadership. Protect yourselves and your faith from shaitan and ourselves. Salam, friends. Thank you, Brother Zamir, for this message. I know you got it from somewhere. Or if you created it, fine, alhamdulillah. But I am taking it to the wise Electric Mosque teachings of Islam to motivate and educate. Brothers and sisters, I hope you understand what is the power of this medium of electricity in propagation and in education. And when I created it, I was abused and make mockery of. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. La ilaha I touch you, brothers and sisters. I touch your head. I touch your forehead. I touch your hands. By the grace of Allah, the power of the Creator, I touch your hearts. And I bless you in the blessings of our shahadu and la ilaha illallah wa shahadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. That the goodness and love enter in each of our hearts, Muslims and non-Muslims. And that if you are sick and unwell, that you will feel better. And that you will prosper. And that you will have success in your life. And to know when disappointments come, it is sometime for your own good. Life cannot be always sweet. And life cannot be always bitter. One cannot always have total wealth. And one cannot have total poverty. Allah give everyone in like measure according to their need. Subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illallah Allahu Akbar Wallahu Akbar Wallahi alhamd Subhanallah Subhanallah, well, bless my viewers, bless your souls, your servants of any faith. Bless the holy waters that they may hold in front of them. Make it holy to cure them of their illnesses, Lord. And protect them from all forms of evil that preponderates in the world and sicknesses and diseases. Bless the sky and the sea and the earth. And every living creature that floats in the sea and swims and flies in the air. And everything that is good for humanity that you have created for us. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. May the peace, mercies, and blessings of Subhanahu wa ta'ala be with one and all. Your friend and your brother, Haji Dr. Roshan Khan, asking for understanding, respect and religions for me to care for each other and in the ethnicities and the love and the goodwill for all of us in Guyana and that he entered the hearts of those who want to destroy our country. Those who are living in New York, the few, those who are within the country are trying to break our peace and create pain for some of us. May we forgive them and pray that their nafs, their psyche, Raised to the highest order. Assalamu alaikum. May the peace, may the mercies and the blessings of Allah, the one true God, be with one and all. <laughs>